before watching the video. Can you please save a little bit of time to like and subscribe to Skyfoods have moved to increase? United Airlines Flight 585 was a scheduled passenger flight on March 3, 1991, from Downing Peoria International Airport in Peoria, Illinois to Colorado Springs, Colorado, making intermediate stops at Quad City International Airport in Moline, Illinois, with an intended final stop at the Naudi Commission Stapleton International Airport in Denver, Colorado. The plane experienced a rudder hardover while on final approach to runway 35 at Colorado Springs Municipal Airport, causing the plane to roll over and enter an uncontrolled dive. United Airlines Flight 585 carrying 20 passengers and 5 crew members on board. Flight 585 was operated by a Boeing 737-291, registered N999UA. The 737 was originally manufactured for the original incarnation of Frontier Airlines in 1982 and was acquired by United Airlines in 1986 when the former went out of business. On the date of the accident, the aircraft had accumulated approximately 26,000 flight hours. The captain of the flight was Harold Green, age 52. He had over 10,000 hours as a United Airlines pilot, including 1,732 hours on the Boeing 737. He was regarded by colleagues as a conservative pilot who always followed standard operating procedures. The first officer was Patricia Edson, age 42. She had accumulated over 4,000 flight hours, including 1,077 hours on the Boeing 737, and she was considered by the captain to be a very competent pilot. At 9.23-16.23 Universal Time Coordinated, Flight 585 departed Denver. At 9 hours 32 minutes and 35 seconds, First Officer Edson reported to Colorado Springs Approach Control that their altitude was 11,000 feet, 3,400 meters. Colorado Springs Approach then cleared the flight for a visual approach to runway 35 and instructed the flight to contact Colorado Springs Tower. At 9 hours 37 minutes and 59 seconds, 1637 and 59 seconds Universal Time Coordinated, Colorado Springs Tower cleared Flight 585 to land on runway 35, notifying the flight that wind was 320 degrees at 16 knots, 30 kilometers per hour, 18 miles per hour, with gusts to 29 knots, 54 kilometers per hour, 33 miles per hour. At this moment, the aircraft was at 8,000 feet, 2,400 meters. At 9 hours 41 minutes and 23 seconds, 1641 and 23 seconds Universal Time Coordinated, Air Traffic Control directed Flight 585 to hold short of runway 30 for departing traffic. Edson replied, we'll hold short of 30, United 585. This was the last transmission received from the flight. At 942, 1642 Universal Time Coordinated, about 20 seconds prior to the crash, the aircraft entered into a controlled 20-degree bank and turned for alignment with the runway. Four seconds later, First Officer Edson informed Captain Green that they were at 1,000 feet, 300 meters. Within the next four seconds, at 9 hours 43 minutes and 33 seconds, 1643 and 33 seconds Universal Time Coordinated. The aircraft suddenly rolled to the right, heading rate increasing to about 5 degrees per second as a result, nearly twice that of a standard rate turn, and pitched nose down. First Officer Edson stated, Oh God, flip! And in the same moment Captain Green called for 15 degrees of flaps while increasing thrust, in an attempt to initiate a go-around. The altitude decreased rapidly and acceleration increased to over 4G until, at 9 hours 43 minutes and 41 seconds, 1643 and 41 seconds universal time coordinated, the aircraft crashed at an 80-degree nosedown angle, yawed 4 degrees to the right, into Whitefield Park, less than 4 miles 6 kilometers from the runway threshold, at a speed of 245 miles per hour.
the aircraft was destroyed on impact and by and 15 feet, 5 meters, deep, narrowly missed a row of apartments, and a little girl standing in the doorway of one of these apartments was knocked backwards by the force of the explosion, hitting her head, but she was released from a local hospital with no further issues after treatment. The National Transportation Safety Board NTSB, commenced an investigation which lasted. Another Boeing 737 crash occurred under very similar circumstances when U.S. Air Flight 427 crashed while attempting to land in Pennsylvania in 1994. The NTSB reopened its investigation into Flight 585 in parallel with the U.S. Air Flight 427 investigation due to the similar nature of the circumstances. The cockpit voice recorder CVR was damaged, but the data tape inside was also intact. However, the data tape had creases in it, resulting in the playback quality being poor. The CVR determined that the pilots made a verbal response to the loss of control. During the NTSB's renewed investigation, it was determined that the crash of Flight 585 and the later Flight 427 crash was the result of a sudden malfunction of the aircraft's rudder power control unit. Another incident, non-fatal, that contributed to the conclusion was that of Eastwind Airlines Flight 517, which had a similar problem upon approach to Richmond on June 9, 1996. On March 27, 2001, the NTSB issued a revised final report for Flight 585, which found that the pilots lost control of the airplane because of a mechanical malfunction. The United Airlines Flight 585 accident was a loss of control of the airplane resulting from the movement of the rudder surface to its blowdown limit. The rudder surface most likely deflected in a direction opposite to that commanded by the pilots as a result of a jam of the main rudder power control unit servo valve secondary slide to the servo valve housing offset from its neutral position and overtravel of the primary slide. A memorial garden honoring the victims is located at Whitefield Park. The garden consists of a gazebo and 25 trees planted in honor of the victims. Thank you for watching the video. If you have an uh, idea of the uh, flight, please comment below to everyone discuss.